everybody. It's Rika Kovacin here and we are starting the Facebook Live in a couple of minutes. This time we'll be making a layout like this using a newer and an older collection mixed together. So first of all let me know if you can see and hear me correctly. Hi Kanika! Hi everybody! Thank you for joining! Like I said, we're doing a layout like this, or remaking something. Oh, from India! Hi! I'm from Finland, so completely different, <laughs> opposite of, of the globe. But we're going to use different Prima Marketing watercolor supplies and mixing Pretty pale. Peru. Wow. All over the world. Uh, yeah, mixing. Sorry. I got, I got sidetracked. Mixing pretty pale with aggregate honey. So this is the newer collection and pretty pale is a bit older, but they go marvelously together. So if you can see and hear me correctly, please just... Hi, Alana from Brazil. Wow. So if you can see and hear me, please give me a thumbs up or something so I know that everything is working. So... What have you been up? Oops, no, it's not focused to the layout. No, it's better. Unfortunately, Sharon is sick today, so let's all, like, say, get well soon for her. But lovely Malika is here to help and moderate. So if you have any questions, just let us know and we'll answer them. And like always, I'll go through the comments after the show, so I'll just see if there's something that Malika has missed or where I need to put my input or something. The volume needs to be louder. Okay, I'm really, really close to the phone and my two daughters are sleeping, but mm, hopefully it will be okay. I think I cannot do anything to get it, like, louder. I'm not sure. Let me just ask. Yeah. Unfortunately, but I'm, I'm trying to be really close to the phone, which is doing, like, the streaming. So, so hopefully you'll be able to hear. So, yeah, this is something we're doing today. So let's get started. Let me move the sample layout to the side for a while. So I'm using the Pretty Pale as the background paper. And I really, really love this collection because it has these wonderful neutral tones that work well with our other collections. And also these kind of collaged prints are really handy because they give like a mixed media feeling or layered feeling to a project, even though you just used one paper. Higher volume. I'm not sure how to put it higher. Does that help if I'm here? Because this is my normal... <laughs> better, okay. I'll be just here at the side, so hopefully it will be good. But yeah, I'm using this as my background. So let me get, it's not that paper I used, it's the, whoops, this paper. When I was doing the sample layout, layout it was really funny to realize that some of the texts in this page are in Finnish. So my native tongue, so it was really strange. But 
there's things in the state as well so not that surprising but still it was fun to be able to read so I trimmed off the edge and now we are ready to go so for the first thing well this happens a lot when I'm doing a layout that I create something and then everything coming on top kind of hides the layers underneath but it's part of my process and if if you want to do something like this you can't be afraid to cover but here's the first thing it's a mm, embossed resist to the paper but especially if you're using like um, darker tones it would be more visible but as I wanted this layout to be pale and romantic and sweet I used kind of not not uh, like totally red or dark colors in the background which would make the resist more visible but what I'm doing now I'm using a Finnabar stamp with embossing ink so it's a clear ink that's why you can't see anything at the moment when you look the paper sideways you can see like a little image where you have stamped but I'm not trying to get a perfect image I'm just going around and around kind of the area where my photo is going to be later on and I work a bit bigger than you would normally do because if your photo let me see your show is like this size and then you work on this kind of area the possibility is quite great that you will end up covering everything so now that I have some stamped here I'm adding clear embossing powder on top and when I do that then you can see the pattern a bit better because the embossing powder will stick to the places where I've stamped with the embossing ink hmm. still a bit hard to see because it's translucent you can use any color of powder for this technique but for kind of a watercolor effect I found the see-through powder the best so let me move this aside because I've prepped one earlier so you don't have to hear the heat tool so so much because then I would heat this and then add the watercolors but let me get the other paper so here I'm hoping the camera gets the effect but it will be more visible when we add the color on top I'm trying to speak only on this side so it would be better so that's why I go silence every time I'm not here for the coloring part I'm using two different watercolor products the actual watercolor set and then the pencils I could use the pencil just by grabbing it here and pulling it to the page immediately but there is a possibility that the little markings are going to be shown so an easy way to use these as paint is to have some kind of piece of plastic this is just a crystal packaging and I'm just rubbing the pencil onto it and then I'm using a wet brush so I can lift the paint I chose this set because there's a great many of different watercolor pencil sets from Prima but I 
chose this one because it has perfect tones for the apricot honey paper line. For example, this pink tone. So then I'm just kind of wiggling my brush around the paper. Let me get that a bit further up. And I'm adding a bit of orange from the watercolor set as well. The Prima watercolors are highly pigmented, so a little goes a long way. And naturally, if you used, would use darker tones, the resist would be more prominent, you could see it more. But as I'm going for the same kind of color sheen that's already in the papers that I'm going to use for layering the apricot honey, then I'm choosing a bit of pale there, for example, you can see it better. there almost so now that you look it's kind of a blob of color let me just add a bit a bit of pinkish tones there let me try I'm going to put the photo here so I'll cover this later on but you can see the effect better with higher contrast, so darker tones. As you can see, the embossed area, first stamped with embossing ink, and then the heated, the embossing powder on top, heated, creates a block, so the color can't absorb to the paper. But now I have kind of a blob of color, so I kind of need to mask it so it wouldn't be so harsh, the edge. So I can use the watercolor pencils also to stamp. It gives kind of a watercolor effect, so it's not as crisp as you would get with an ink. So I'm first using some just water in a mister getting the stamp a bit wet. So when I take the watercolor pencil and rub it to my stamp, the color gets loose and I can color my stamp using the watercolor pencil. The less you use water, the clearer the image is going to be. But if you want a, like a more watercolory, more hazy look, then use more water. But just by adding the colors directly to the stamp, I'm able to kind of try to mask the edge so it's not that harsh. Just there's a line of color and then... <clears throat> comes the paper, but I'm using the same colors and kind of masking the edge of the colored area using the stamp. And as it's the same stamp, it's kind of repeating the patterns that are already in the page. So here we go. And then remember to clean your stamp. I'd say it's a watercolor product. I don't have to do it right now because it will go or I can clean it afterwards. So then let's move this aside so it can dry. Naturally, you could use your heat tool, but as there's the embossing powder, there is um, a risk that you end up melting the powder so that the watercolor can get kind of underneath it. So then it's not as resist looking anymore. So I'll try to let this air dry. And because, well, 
you need something to watch while it dries otherwise it would be really boring there's another option from the Prima Repertoire to be used with embossing powder and that's inks the color philosophy inks work with embossing powders as well and that way you can get colored images so it's kind of giving that raised effect from the embossing powder but at the same time you get the color underneath and still you need just one powder you don't there's a lot of different like colors of the powders available but if you have clear and colored inks then you have like a great variety of different finishes in a way even though you just have that one powder let's do it this way it's easier so I'm using color philosophy poison love ink because of the neutral tone and about like a little hint of blue so it's kind of contrasting color from all the orange I have going on in the page these are already done but I think I can manage one more bird here so I'm just stamping it and with embossing ink it's meant that it's really uh, slow drying but with Prima inks you need to be a bit faster there's the powder there and then you just add the powder on top as you can see it grabs onto the ink and then we heat it sorry for all the noise It's done so now it has a bit of raised effect and even if you're working with kind of water active inks so if I would just stamp it and water it would bleed but the embossing powder also kind of seals the ink in so you can even add water on top and it won't bleed that well I'm I can't well I'm just saying hi to everybody from here because when I'm talking from the side as it's kind of required as you were saying it wasn't loud enough so I can't watch the screen but I'll go through the comments after the show so I'll I'll see if there's anything I've missed um, now that we're still waiting a bit for the page to try so let's finish the embellishments this time I didn't pre-cut all of them just that there's a bit of drying time and I also thought that if you like fussy cutting I think I've said it before but when you're fussy cutting with scissors I like to use my scissors I don't use a craft knife I'm not that skilled with a craft knife I get it. I don't get anything done but with scissors it's faster for me so I'm kind of as you can see I'm moving the image not my scissors the scissors stay put only they go kind of I open and close them so they cut but the other hand is moving the image around so I can just concentrate on the movement well not when I'm talking but still so like that now we have a butterfly and a bird ready for the embellishing part 
and we can do one more thing before actually making the layout. Let me already get this one because it's almost done. This paper is from the pale, pretty pale collection again, and I'm going to use that flower in the page. Let me get the sample way out there. As you can see, it's a bit different because I colored it to match the other flowers I have going on there. Because I only have like a six by six pad from the uh, apricot honey, and I really like the colors. But the flowers in the six by six pad are naturally smaller than the twelve by twelve ones, so I needed a bit of bigger set of bigger flowers, and I found them from the pretty paper, a pretty pale paper pad I already had in use but these neutral flowers don't mix with the apricot ones as they are colored but as they are opposite sides of the photo and these are no neutral tones they are not like blue or something I'm able to color them using the watercolor products and thus match the two color palettes in the same project. So now we have that one also done and ready to be colored when the time comes. It's almost done, so maybe I'll add a hint of color to these and then we can get creating the layout so this should be a bit of a oh you can't see anything I'm mixing a bit of green and a touch of brown so it wouldn't be that like Kermit green and as it's printed I don't have to be too careful, like I don't have to color it perfect, just add a bit of green to the leaves and oops, let's get this one here and then kind of the same warm pink-ish peach, well, apricot kind of color. Cold flowers, let's try that one. Yeah, pretty good. Maybe a hint of green. Yeah, here we go. And then let's move that aside and get cracking with the actual layout. A table is too small. So for the first thing, these are cut from the apricot honey set, like the six by six pad. And I'm kind of creating a line using them to me, creating a layout is all about kind of horizontals and vertical lines and the in intersection of those two should be around the photo. So it's kind of guiding the eye in for the photo. So I'm using a teeny tiny bit of double sided tape just that they stay put. doing this kind of a way we line in a way using them probably they end up being like in my sample layout there's mm, one and a half 
let's say, showing in the end. If you are really like focused, you know what you're going to put your photo and you know kind of the size of your paper layers beforehand, then naturally you can leave a couple of them away. But I like to be more like going with the flow, just creating and then seeing what's happening in the layout. And I was able to use just a couple of strips of double-sided tape because I'm adding then something on top. This is from the Art Daily line, a little washi tape that's kind of sticking the little cards better to their place. And with the sample layout, I also add some machine sewing. You can see it better from this side. But when I was thinking, like, do I prepare another layout for this stage with the sewing part? But as you can see from the finished layout, it's just a teeny tiny detail. It is there, but I thought that I'll skip it with this layout. But especially if you're using uh, stitching on top of your layout, let the paper dry thoroughly because when the paper is wet it's kind of in its most one vulnerable so vulnerable come on i can't say the word it gets ripped really easy so make sure that it's completely dried if you add sewing on top and that's a perfect way to add here kind of little things where you don't want to use a lot of glue so that's kind of the bottom layer. Then I think this is going to be here. And then we need more papers to do the paper la uh, layers. And what I also used in there was an envelope. This was kind of too big for that one, so I just folded a couple of times to make it a bit shorter. Come on. Naturally, if you have a smaller envelope, <laughs> that would be handy. And if you do it like this, then you can't get anything inside but if you use a smaller envelope and make sure that when you're adhering the layers on top you don't actually seal the envelope in you can add a journaling there kind of hidden in plain sight so to speak I so need a bigger table for the live shows. So now I'm just cutting random pieces from patent papers. And for the layers, I'm mainly using the apricot honey. What else? Let's add that one, maybe. And anything else? No, let's go with that. For the paper layers, I'm usually using one a bit bigger element. And that's the envelope and then all the others are smaller so they are easy for me to then collage or like put together in layers and this one is from the pretty pale where i cut the flower from i'm getting one of these elements from here as well 
It's up to you if you like to use scissors all the way or if you want to use paper cutter. I usually use paper cutter, it's easier for me, but whatever is better for you. So the first thing is to do the paper layers and then we can add the flowers and the little like details. And I'm usually doing the paper layers just in my hand, holding the photo and then tucking the different papers underneath. And for the paper layers I'm also kind of going zigzag or like adding some horizontal pieces, adding some vertical pieces and it usually pays off when you add something from the, for the other side and then repeat it on the other and when it starts to get that my hand can't hold the layers anymore in comes the stapler naturally if you would have something on the envelope then don't use stapler at least not like that but first adhere all the layers and then use double-sided tape for example to get the actual envelope there so you don't lock anything everything in let's use that one there and maybe a piece here as well <laughs> like that yeah then let's staple these in oh, somewhat straight maybe and there's the paper layers now done it's going to be here and the same as the sample layout there's one and a half showing <laughs> but I've always said that to me it's more about the process than the end result or well at least 50 50 naturally I want the layout or card or whatever I'm doing canvas look good but to me it's all about the also about the process of creating I just can't and let loose I don't have to think that oh my god, then the photo is going to cover everything. But I can just have fun with the colors and create the background and then continue with the photo, kind of hoping that something will be visible in the end. But also that it's part of the process. I've had fun creating it, so it's got to be kind of showing from the project in another way, if actually not the layer is showing. And now I'm using just foam dots to first adhere the photo to the cluster and then the whole cluster to the page. I'm sorry I'm miss missing all the chat because I'm trying to keep myself here in the near facility of the microphone i'm not sure if there's a like microphone available for a phone so i could have it on my table for the next show i need to look into that oops now it's all crooked there we go now they are there so as you can see there's the layout uh, layers underneath everything and then I can start embellishing. It's a kind of slow process in a way, like I'm adding something and then a little bit of something. But the main focus should be on the photo. Oh, it's that way. That's why it's not going. Yes, I want this one to be here. Ok, 
like so. And then we have the others here. As this one is kind of going that way, maybe I'll be able to use these flowers here. Yes. And I'm just using paper glue to add here these. So now there's the big flower parts. Then we have our butterfly. And where's the bird? Come on. Hmm. Where did I end up putting that one? There it is. Maybe there. And this one could be here. These I don't adhere just yet. Hi Liliana. Yay, I saw a comment. Perfect. So we're doing a layout today using some watercolor products and mixing two collections. And these flowers are actually from the Moon Child collection, but it also has this perfect apricot kind of tone that goes well with the papers. So these I actually adhered, but now when I'm adding the Prima blooms, I'm kind of thinking where to put them and I can move the stamped images still around. But as you can see, I'm kind of doing this side, that, that side style. So there's something on both sides going on. Maybe this flower, well, no flower. Bird could have one more. Then maybe here still. Yeah, let's go with that. I don't think too much about the composition because if you don't glue something in, there's like an endless possibility to move things around. So you might not get anything done when you just shuffle things around. And especially during a live show, that's not thing I'm after at the moment. And again, I'm using just craft glue to get the flowers. I'm not sure why it was doesn't want to stick where I put it. There, it's paper. Yes, like so. And then some more little details. These are just teeny tiny paper clips that are always handy. When you are adding elements around the photo, try to add something like on top and something underneath. So it kind of seals the photo in, in a way because there's something going on both sides. And come on. They are really cute, but they are really hard to get to stay. And then some stickers. I want to add a feather here. And these stickers are from the um, Amber Moon collection. 
Hmm, look at the Lego bird. There's Fitter and Pert Bird. It's kind of just little, little details. In this stage, you can kind of go on and on. Just adding little, little things for eye to catch. And then a couple of crystal stickers. Again, I'm using the same composition I already have going on. Kind of the linear, linear, linear. That's the way you say it. Here and then one there and somehow missed it glue part so let's use that and then I saw that this hasn't been stapled so I can glue that in like so and then I'm using a word from one of the cards as kind of the title for the page. Cut that loose and glue that on. Like so. And then kind of the last detail. I was inspired by the florals here. So I, I mimicked them using the Finnabar uh, glass beads. So you can see here and here, there's kind of little clusters mimicking the center of the flowers in the background. So it's just to put up a blob of, okay, that's my teacup. No. Sorry, I, I forgot to remove that earlier. So go and then one more here and then I just sprinkle the pearls on top kind of creating a little mountain hive what are these called with them Even though all the pearls are not sticking to the glue, I'm going to leave it like this to dry. And only afterwards get rid of the extra because they are really easy then to put back to the jar, the ones that are not sticking. So I'm kind of trying to mimic the shape of the insides of the flowers. And also kind of the same type of color that there was. The last thing I did with this layout was to add these parts because I was feeling even though I tried to round the photo by these kinds of layers, it was missing a horizontal, uh, vertical, sorry, vertical element. So I cut a teeny tiny piece of patterned paper and kind of fastened the photo or the cluster to the edges of the page and also added a little space for journaling. With this, I'm not seeing the same kind of <laughs> flowiness that it kind of needs that. But if you're feeling that it's not staying put in a way, the composition you have done, then adding a bit of string or just a teeny tiny element highlighting that vertical element if you have the horizontal or the other way around. If my composition would be like this, then it might need something from here. But here I guess it's the 
pink paper that's kind of enough for me to be okay with it or then it's just that I'm looking it from the side as I try to speak to the speaker at the same time but if you feel that you need to ground the photo somehow then adding a bit of stripe or pattern paper might do the thing so for example that's a perfect little journaling spot we can add perhaps or then this one from the pretty pale papers as the, they have these amazing looking little layers even though the paper is totally flat oops now I can cut it or then maybe that one and kind of just tuck something here to highlight that other dimension so it's kind of putting it uh, the photo to the center of the cross and so it's staying put but it's up, up to you if, if you feel like it for this I might add just those and it's it's enough I don't have to have longer so thank you so much for coming I hope you liked it and there's a really big variety of different watercolor products for Prima and you can even watercolor with color philosophy inks so if you're just joining in and miss, missed the show the recording will be available quite shortly and if you have any questions just type them in and I'll answer them in a moment so thank you so much for coming thank you Malika for being here to moderate thank you all for watching kiitos suomalaisille kikkutulitte yay and like like I said, if you have any question, just let me know. Thank you. Have a nice evening or day or night, depending where you are. Bye.